Yeah, it, it just makes it so interesting. But, but from a practical point of view, if you want to conduct a trial and you want to, say, give someone a particular dose of psilocybin, yeah. where do you get that psilocybin from? Um, yes, well, generally we get it, we, there are two, they either get it from companies that are making it to, as a medicine, which they're trying to get a license for, mm. or you can, um, there are one or two other co companies now in Canada that have been set up to make it available for research, so we can, we can buy it from them. Right. But it's, it's an, it's an unbelievable process because getting this super dangerous drug, Schedule 1 drug from Canada to Britain, I mean, you know, it's easier to import plutonium. I mean, it, it, it genuinely is almost, you know, you, it is, it takes a year basically to, to get it. I mean, it's just so many, so much paperwork. They don't want I mean, it. Yeah. I actually find it offensive that, you know, someone, a doctor with your level of experience has to spend so much time filling out forms rather than looking after sick people you know when i when i'm ill i want someone like you to look after me please i don't want you stuck away in an office do, doing some stuffy paperwork jumping through some silly hoops but i i think you do spend quite a lot of time doing that oh well, yeah it's utterly destructive the first well here's his i don't know how you keep going it must be soul destroying <laughs> well yeah i someone's got to do it haven't they john i mean i, I <laughs> yeah. I think I, the, the truth is, I, you know, it's being sacked is, when I was the government's chief drug supplier, being sacked actually kind of made me realize it. You know, you could, I tried reason. I tried nine years of reason before they sacked me and I realized reason isn't going to work. So you just have to get around it. So, I mean, you were what we call the UK drugs czar, for want of a better term. You were the, that's right, yes. the go to, but then a particular prime minister, 2009? That's right. Yes, Gordon Brown and I never really saw eye to eye. <laughs> yeah, decided that uh, they didn't like your science, so you got. Uh, yes, I got the. Um, oh, sacked isn't too strong a word, is it? Oh no, no, it was an absolute sacking. No, there was no question. Well, they, well, you might find this amusing. They, um, I won't tell you the whole story, but one afternoon, <laughs> one afternoon, I got an email asking me to resign. And I yeah. said, "Well, I'm not, why should I resign? All I've done is, <laughs> is done science and told you the truth." And uh, I'm not going to resign. And then the email came back, well, you're sacked then. <laughs> yeah. Wait, can I just finish the story about the first... The first please, please do. So in 2012, the Medical Research Council put out a call for new treatments for resistant depression, you know, accepting the fact that we hadn't any. And uh, we wrote this grant suggesting that psilocybin might work. And the reason we, we thought it might work was because we'd done the brain scanning studies and we showed it changed activity in the, in the brains of, uh, in the same places as uh, uh, depression was cited. And also in our healthy volunteer studies, many of them said they felt better and they felt more enlivened and more in touch with the world afterwards. So we wrote the grant. Amazingly, we, it got funded. I mean, uh, so it was a three-year grant. It took... It took 30 months, 30 months to get the uh, psilocybin. Only one place in the world could make it, it wasn't in Britain. 30 so months. you had six months left to do the work. Well, hang on, hang on. <laughs> and then two months, two more months to get the mission. So we had four months. And then and I wrote to the MRC, I so, said, you know, can we extend? And they said, well, yeah. But eventually, I, they wouldn't give me any more money, but we carried on going. We got charitable money. To, but, but what a waste of time. Th nearly three years. To, now it's only a year, so we've made progress, but it's still stupid. Yeah, I mean, we're laughing, because of, not because it's funny. No, no. It's, because of the sheer absurdity. Absurdity, exactly. Of, uh, you know, w w why do we bother with consultant psychiatrists if we're not going to listen to them? You know, it just seems... Well, anyway. oh, John, you know, let's not go. But part of the part of the challenge is that successive governments have tried to destroy the ability of doctors and nurses to think. Yeah. We're not allowed to think. We have to do. We have to do what someone tells us. And that's nice. Or that's the MHRA. If one day I'm going to write, a, maybe the last paper I'll write will be a call to arms to doctors to start thinking again, rather than just basically working through algorithms which are wrong yeah sounds rather dangerous <laughs> I, I actually i actually worked in full-time academia and education for nearly right. 30 years and when i retired i went back as a 
staff nurse on uh, A and E, just just part just part time. It, it was great, and um, you know it's very much then a patient would come in, and it wasn't the doctor thinking, oh, let's think about this. It was, oh, go away and find the protocol for this. Go away and find the nice guideline for this. You know, it was all based on protocols, tick boxes. Yeah. Um, what it says in the BNF, what it says in the NICE guidelines. There didn't seem to be any application of, of uh, what might maybe we used to call a medical opinion. Yes, no, you're right. Um, well, I often say to people, I often think now, if, if, I, if I discovered penicillin today, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I would never be able to try it. I mean, it would, I'd have, I would have to spend many millions of pounds before I could even know it worked. Whereas, obviously, you know, when when it was discovered, but and then made by um, Chain and Flory in Oxford, you know, there was a guy, there was a policeman dying of Staphylococcus, and they said, yeah. "Well, let's give it a go because it kills it in the chest tube." Yeah. And a whole new branch of medicine, antibiotics, was developed. But today, yeah. you couldn't do that. You wouldn't be allowed to. You could not allow to to be innovative at all. It's it's, it's really dis, you know disappointing. Mm, absolutely. Well, the, the discovery of insulin, they went along, and, along to a ward and changed, saved a child's life straight away. Um, yeah. Uh, now, if you did that now, they'd, they'd strike you off. Yeah. Yeah. 